This is what you get when you mix a desire to make money with the celebration of good times. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 holiday cash grab movies. I have one job tonight, to make sure even if I have to do it with my own two hands, that ball descends at midnight. For this list, we're focusing on mainstream films that forgot about things like storytelling or character development in an attempt to capitalize on the holiday spirit whether it's Christmas, Halloween, or another special day. In other words, these movies focused on trying to get a big holiday cash return. Both theatrical and direct-to-video motion pictures will be considered. Five, six, oh. seven, eight! No, I, think we're, I think we're okay. We, I don't, oh, we haven't seen that one. Number 10, Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers. How many times do I have to tell you? It's not about Halloween. In the horror genre, sequels and subsequent installments can be quite lucrative. Yet some franchises don't age that well. Years before Joe Chappelle directed six episodes of HBO's acclaimed series The Wire, he stepped behind the camera for the sixth installment of the Halloween franchise, which also happens to star young Paul Rudd. Why are they doing this? Why didn't they just kill us? The screenplay was actually revised several times over, and the film ultimately tripled its $5 million budget in box office returns. Even so, critics responded negatively to the narrative, saying that even though The Curse of Michael Myers didn't suffer from a Celtic curse like its antagonist, it did suffer from a bad case of subpar filmmaking. That's Loomis, you know that can't stop Michael. Nothing will stop Michael. Number nine, Christmas Eve. I'm getting fired? <laughs> Laid off. But it's Christmas Eve. So here's a holiday film that was actually produced by American talk show host Larry King. Unfortunately for him, the entire world reacted negatively to Christmas Eve, at least according to the 0% Rotten Tomatoes rating, which is obviously rock bottom. <laughs> On paper, a screenplay featuring numerous elevators may not seem appealing, but director Mitch Davis pushed forward with the Big Apple Ensemble movie anyway. These people, they are tough. The weak people trying to act tough. Sure, it's got Patrick Stewart and John Heater in lead roles, but then again, it's got Patrick Stewart and John Heater in lead roles. Not quite the ideal duo. That's where the magic ends. But like many holiday films, Christmas Eve reminds us that humans do indeed have emotions. So there is some value, despite the overall awfulness. You know, anything worse than being stuck in this elevator is being stuck in third chair. When I get out of here, I'm gonna try out for first. Number eight, Surviving Christmas. Tom, please, please let me stay here. No, I'll pay you. It's really important for a movie to be describable in one short, punchy sentence. For this DreamWorks cash grab, the producers decided on this. A lonely, obnoxious young millionaire pays a family to spend Christmas with him. He's given us $250,000 to be his family for Christmas. And you agreed to this without asking me. Of course I did. He's giving us $250,000. Sure, Ben Affleck can draw in a few viewers, but there's only so much he can do with a questionable holiday script. And so, Surviving Christmas bombed miserably at the box office. That's my brother, just never afraid to put a price tag on his feelings. <laughs> then again, it might have done better had it actually been released during Christmas time rather than Halloween. What is the matter with you? I'm sorry. Number seven. The Santa Claus 3, The Escape Clause. Did you just accuse me of being skillful and delicious? Oh, please. Guilty as charged. If you weren't moved by the first two installments of The Santa Claus, chances are this cash grab didn't quite tickle your fancy either. And you get the TV specials, and you get the postage stamps, and the billboards, and the beautiful adoring wife, and the, the army of toy building yes men. What do I get? A few runny noses and some dead citrus. One critic actually described Martin Short's performance as, quote, an evil cross between Liza Minnelli and Liberace. Yet the film actually outperformed its $12 million budget several times over. Why, you may ask? Well, because the holiday cash grab idea works sometimes. And certainly because of the success of the first two flicks. I'm gonna kick the coal out of whoever did that! <laughs> Even so, when all was said and done, The Escape Clause received numerous nominations at the Golden Raspberry Awards, most notably for Worst Excuse for Family Entertainment. Get this through your head. You're not Santa anymore. 
You're just a guy who smells like a cookie. Number six, Jack Frost. Snow Dad's better than no dad. The holiday season can be an emotional time, especially when your late husband returns as a plump snowman. Honestly, considering that explanation of the plot, we wouldn't blame you if you'd categorize this Michael Keaton flick as a horror. But Jack Frost is indeed a supposedly heartwarming family Christmas film about a wannabe rock star who dies in a car crash on his way to spend Christmas with his family, and gets a second chance with his son when he comes back in the form of a snowman. So I'm supposed to believe that you're my dad? Hey, do me a favor, go easy on me, because I'm having a little bit of trouble dealing with it myself, okay? Unsurprisingly, despite Laszlo Kovacs' brilliant cinematography and a Jim Henson Company snowman costume, Jack Frost bombed at the box office. Let's get out of here! Woo! Number five, Beauty and the Beast, The Enchanted Christmas. I fell and I landed on my, on, on the ice. In this cash grab sequel, the titular Beast trolls the holiday season like a big ol' meanie. He's obviously dealing with some unresolved issues, like being physically transformed during Christmas time, yet it's a weak excuse for a direct-to-video follow-up. This is the last one. That's not it. That's just a weed wishing it was a tree. The Enchanted Christmas managed to rack up a few Annie Award nominations, which celebrate animation and film. But the movie is still yet another cash grabber that audiences did not respond to positively. One log is chosen, then everyone in the house touches it and makes a Christmas wish. Wishes are stupid. In other words, the 0% Rotten Tomatoes score suggests that many movie watchers hate this film more than the Beast hates Christmas. The master has forbidden Christmas! <laughs> forbid Christmas? No one can forbid Christmas. Number four, a Medea Christmas. Good morning, Miss Mandela. Not Mandela, honey, Medea. So there's nothing wrong with enjoying Tyler Perry's films, but the guy has been known to pump out a lot of them over the years. For his 17th production, Medea got into the holiday spirit, with the characterization leading to a golden raspberry victory for worst actress. Yeah, I need some help. Hold on, cause somebody's screaming at me. I'm giving to choke the hell out of her, hold on. It's a film that actually stars Larry the Cable Guy as a supporting actor, making a Medea Christmas both diverse and problematic. Well, hey, look, he's trying. We sure do appreciate you helping. Oh, no, that's fine. I'm, I'm gonna show him how to do it. Diversity often trumps narrative structure when filmmakers need some quick dough. Sure, the film doubled its $25 million budget, but it robbed poor moviegoers of the holiday spirit, too. Your daughter is grown. Leave her alone. And if she wanted to come home, she would come home. Even so, holiday cash grab Medea returned just a few years later for Boo, a Medea Halloween, which is indeed a real film. We got knocked the hell out. Number three, Mother's Day. Dad brought them. He lets us. He also lets you go to school without any underwear. It's called free balling, Mom. For the most part, Julia Roberts, Jennifer Aniston, and Kate Hudson are all bankable leads. Yet most viewers like to see them overcome cutesy conflict in romantic comedies rather than cash grab holiday films. It's just all this Mother's Day stuff and I start thinking about how I haven't talked to Mom. With all due respect to the late Gary Marshall, his final productions represent the epitome of cash grabs, featuring endearing ensemble casts struggling with first world dilemmas. And I also called to tell you that no matter what's happened between us, you're always my mother. Set in Atlanta, Mother's Day lasts what seems to be a very lengthy two hours. Okay, maybe there are a few bright spots, but critic Richard Roper summed it all up by noting that, quote, nothing could have prepared us for the offensively stupid, shamelessly manipulative, ridiculously predictable, and hopelessly dated crap fest that is Mother's Day. Couldn't have put it better ourselves. Okay, you just keep thinking all of those wonderfully deep thoughts, okay? I'll talk to you later. Number two, Valentine's Day. There you have it, young love, full of promise, full of hope, ignorant of reality. Kicking off the unofficial cash grab or crap fest trilogy, we've got a massive ensemble cast trying to be relatable for some Tinseltown romance. Do you still believe in love? Oh, hell yes. Love is the only 
shocking act left on the planet. For this one, director Gary Marshall worked off a script written by Army Wives creator Catherine Fouget, with the flick featuring all the timely plot points the modern viewers expect. I know I let you down, and maybe you don't think I deserve your forgiveness, but you're going to give it to me anyway, because when you love someone, you love all of them. That's the job! It's not a completely terrible film like some of the others on our list, but the generic structure and plethora of characters just scream out holiday cash grab. I need happy, I need romantic, I need love, and I need it from you. You need Jesus. Even so, Valentine's Day made a couple hundred million dollars, making it perhaps the most successful American ripoff of the 2003 film Love Actually. If you look for it, I've got a sneaky feeling you'll find that Love Actually is all around. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. It worked! Father Christmas, just tell me what you want from me. Number one, New Year's Eve. Once a Hollywood cash grab film succeeds, it only makes sense to immediately produce a follow-up. Unfortunately for Gary Marshall, New Year's Eve earned a grand total of five Golden Raspberry nominations, even if the film did serve its purpose. In other words, this New York City flick cashed in on the Times Square experience, more than doubling its budget in the process. Mom, I want to go to Times Square tonight to watch the ball drop. Well, I plan to avoid this entire section of the city tonight. But the problem is this, too many cooks in the kitchen, or too many celebrities in this case. Let's remember to be nice to each other, kind to each other, and not just tonight, but all year long. Even if the film was meant to be little more than a blatant cash grab, the formulaic concept makes it overwhelming and almost offensive especially considering the quality holiday films we have to choose from. I don't know what her deal is, man. She's just like a couple sandwiches short of a picnic, you know? Do you agree with our list? Which film do you think is the most obvious holiday cash grab? Dad, you're melting. You gotta be crazy to come here. Hey, I couldn't miss your big game, Charlie. For more cinematic top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. I don't know why I'd bother. <sighs>